We begin tonight with the Gravitas exclusive. On the 5th of August 2019, India made a historic decision. The special status to Jammu and Kashmir was withdrawn. In the following weeks, the Parliament of India cleared major changes. The state of Jammu and Kashmir was split into two union territories. It was the most radical change in Kashmir status since independence. That was a year ago. In nine days from now, the Modi government's Kashmir decision completes one year. And Pakistan has some plans for the first anniversary. Tonight, we have for you an exclusive report on Pakistan's strategy. Pakistan wants to launch an information war campaign and we have access to their playbook. When India had made the Kashmir decision, Imran Khan had launched a diplomatic campaign. He declared himself the ambassador of Kashmir. That's what he said. He's the ambassador of Kashmir and made speeches at different international forums. It was a desperate attempt to win allies. It did not work. Now, Pakistan is back with another plan. This is more elaborate, more exhaustive. And the focus is on the 5th of August, the anniversary of India's Kashmir decision. On your screen are two documents exclusively accessed by Beyond. Pakistan wants to observe the 5th of August as a black day. And it has a plan complete with a flowchart, a list of tasks. The Pakistani government has planned several activities and different departments have been put in charge of specific tasks. This is Pakistan's information war campaign against India and here is how they plan to execute it. The tasks are split into three categories, diplomatic measures, government initiatives and the media. The idea is to build a narrative against the government of India and the plan has two parts. First is the tempo building that is before the 5th of August and the second is what they're calling the Black Day event. And it's already work in progress, we can tell you, because last week we'd reported about the visit of foreign media to the line of control. This, these were hand-picked journalists. They belonged to organizations sympathetic to Pakistan, like Turkey state media, TRT, and Chinese state television, CCTV. They came back with positive observations about Pakistan. This is part of the tempo building phase, which is the first phase. Next week, on the 4th of August, Pakistan will take the UN Military Observer Group to POK. That's Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. And the ISPR is in charge of this. ISPR is the Inter-Services Public Relations. And with every task, Pakistan also wants certain objectives to be achieved. And this is how detailed this plan is. Why has Pakistan chosen the 4th of August for a visit of United Nations observers? Because it wants to push a narrative. It wants to make a point. Islamabad will claim that it is allowing free movement of observers while India is not. That's the idea. And the media is playing a major role in this entire affair. Pakistan plans to leverage every medium at its disposal on the 5th of August. There will be special supplements in all major newspapers in Pakistan. Logos of news channels will have to go black. This is apparently mandated by the government. All channels will be in special reports created by the Pakistani government. Pamphlets will be distributed. The Pakistani government alone plans to release as many as four packages of video clips and the media of Pakistan will have to spread this propaganda. What about Imran Khan? Well, just like last year, he will travel to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, deliver a speech to the assembly there, something that will be amplified by the government and the media. Flag rallies have been scheduled. Pakistan's foreign office has also been given a task. On the 5th of August, they will release a white paper. This document will be shared with UN observers a day before this. And that's not all. The Foreign Office has been asked to secure statements or tweets of support. Who will support them? They're counting on some people. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, and some international human rights organizations. So let me sum up this plan for you. Pakistan wants to launch a propaganda campaign on the anniversary of India's Kashmir decision. And for this, it is using its entire state machinery and its media, not to mention spending money. Their list of allies is short and predictable. The President of Turkey, the Prime Minister of Malaysia and the Chinese Foreign Office. That is all. I'll end with two comments. One, if Pakistan put half as much effort in fixing its own problems, which I shall not list here because enough has been said about them already, it would be much better off. And two, 
if this is the one big project they undertake and cannot execute without all the details getting out, then Pakistan should be seriously worried about its strategic planning.